So the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro lineup finally released, and we've had it for about three or four days now at this point, and it brought a bunch of new features like the always-on display, the dynamic island, you know, the new camera system, the 48 megapixel camera. Now those were mostly 14 Pro and Pro Max features, but again, they were welcome and nice additions. But Apple added one new feature that was kind of interesting, and not a lot of people understood why they did this, and that was the exclusive addition of eSIM in the iPhone 14 lineup in the US alone. Last year with the iPhone 13 lineup, Apple added a secondary eSIM into the iPhone 13s, but they still kept the physical SIM all over the world. But now with this new iPhone 14 lineup in the US alone, we are only using eSIM and you can see that we don't have a SIM card tray anymore because gone are the days of a physical SIM card. So in this video, I wanna talk about why Apple did this, how easy it is to transition to and from eSIMs, and then finally, and then finally, if you're in a situation where you need a physical SIM card, but you have an iPhone 14, what do you do? But let's talk about it, everybody. So firstly, let's talk about why Apple might have done this eSIM transition, at least from an exclusivity standpoint, in the US alone. Firstly, you know, I bet you it's because they have courage. <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, I think they did it just because they want to lock you in even that much more, and they probably cut a deal with the carriers in the US that saying like, hey, if we go full eSIM and you guys can provide services for full eSIM, then it's probably going to keep people locked into your service even that much longer. So the eSIM, yeah, brings some benefits to the environment, like no more eSIM cards, right? It also brings some benefits in terms of connectivity and human error, where people popping in and out the SIM cards can kind of be annoying and can cause human error. And then also the SIM cards kind of dying out and that connection point kind of dying out is also something that Apple probably could have used to their advantage to say like, hey, you no longer have to worry about your physical SIM cutting out or the connection breaking because it's all built right in. But again, Apple's getting closer and closer to their situation where there's gonna be zero ports and ideally zero buttons, you know, come the next three, four, five, maybe even 10 years because I think Apple's going to finally forego the rest of all the inputs on the iPhone over time. But that has to be the main reason why. The main reason has to be that they wanna lock you in even more. And then the reason they're going with the US alone is because most people don't travel internationally in the US and aren't constantly switching SIM cards in the US because once they're locked into a carrier and locked into a phone, that's pretty much all they're sticking with. So now let's talk about this eSIM transition that the iPhone 14 is bringing. Because again, like I mentioned, the iPhone 12 and 13 supported eSIM, but they still had a physical SIM card because they didn't want to get away with it, or at least get rid of it, not quite yet. And then there are other Android phones that support eSIM. And pretty much my consensus is when you're transitioning between phones that have eSIM, it's relatively simple for the most part. If you guys watched my last video, you saw me unbox the iPhone 14 Pro Max and transition my phone number from my 13 Pro Max to my 14 Pro Max in less than a minute, which is totally fine. It took much longer to just re-download my applications and my photos and restore from backup than it did to actually port my number over from a physical SIM card because I had a physical SIM on my iPhone 13 Pro Max to an eSIM. So if you're in a situation where you bought the 14 Pro Max and it wasn't everything that you wanted it to be and you wanna switch back to whatever phone you had before and it has eSIM, then you will be fine. All you have to do is go to your old phone, go into the settings, go into cellular, and then go to the eSIM option. And then it'll ask you if you wanna port your phone number back to this phone. You just toggle that button on. And as long as you have about 10 minutes of your day to you know, put your mind towards this, then you'll be fine because it'll just slowly port over your phone. It'll kill service on your new eSIM phone and put back the service on your old eSIM phone and you'll be totally fine and you'll be good to go. So from an eSIM like service and technology standpoint, I see why Apple moved to it because it's much easier. As long as you have cell phone service and a data connection, it'll work seamlessly. And as long as you have both of your phones right in front of you, it'll also work seamlessly. Not that switching a physical SIM card was too hard, but you no longer need that little tool to pop out the SIM card tray. And again, it's one less moving part and one less thing that human error can take into account. And Apple, I'm sure, wants to get rid of all of those aspects. But then the million dollar question is, what do you do if you wanna switch back to a phone that has only a physical SIM card, right? Or let's say you're in a situation where you just bought yourself an iPhone 14 Pro Max and you went overseas and you don't wanna use your roaming data because you know it costs way too much money and you wanna get a SIM card locally from wherever you are in Europe, that's a situation where sadly we are pretty much SOL, right? Unless the carrier that you're going to overseas supports eSIM, it's gonna be impossible for you to use a local SIM card from wherever you are and put it into your iPhone. At that situation, I'd probably recommend going with a 13 or 13 Pro Max, just because they do have both an eSIM and a physical SIM. But if you are in a situation where you need to put a physical SIM card into your iPhone and you have an iPhone 14, you unfortunately will not be able to do that and probably won't be able to do that moving forward. But I'm sure carriers over time, especially the ones that don't support eSIM quite yet, will eventually support eSIM because I do think that's the wave moving forward. 
And then the last situation that I could think of, which I might be in, is let's say you got yourself a 14 Pro Max and you have, let's say, an iPhone 11 or an iPhone 10 that you wanna go back to because you thought to yourself, hey, this 14 Pro Max isn't really worth it, like $1,100, a dynamic island really isn't worth it, and I was totally happy with my iPhone 11, how do I go back to it because it's only physical SIM supported? So what you have to do is you have to call your carrier, and it's actually a fairly easy process as long as you have the time to do it. You just call your carrier, let them know like, hey, I wanna port my eSIM, over to my physical SIM, and then one of two things can happen. They'll either send you to a physical location, and they'll do it right then and there, or they'll port it over the phone, and then send you a SIM card over the mail, and then once you receive that SIM card over the mail and you put it into your old phone, then the service cuts over. So at no point will you be without service. And I actually recorded myself on the phone with T-Mobile talking to them about this, because if I wanted to go and get a physical SIM card, then it's actually not that hard to do. But Yes, we will just need to update the physical SIM card through the eSIM number so that uh, you can still use that physical SIM card. So what I mainly wanted to talk about in this video was a, how good the new eSIM technology was, like is it easy to transition between eSIM capable phones? And the answer is yes. And then secondly, I wanted to know how difficult it would be to transfer from an eSIM to a physical SIM if you are in a situation where you need a physical SIM card. So hopefully I was able to answer those questions. And if you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below so that I know you made it to the end. And also leave some comments down below. How is your eSIM transition if you were coming from an older iPhone over to the new iPhone 14 lineup. Did you guys pick up an iPhone 14? Did you have any issues during the eSIM activation here in the US? And also, if you aren't in the US, let me know how good life is with still a physical SIM card. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you guys wanna watch some more iOS 16, iPhone 14, or iPadOS content, click on one of these videos right here. But until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.